So at that time, I said, you know, you got heroes. So why don't you go look at your heroes? And let's, so I picked the number one guy that's my hero. His name is Roy Simmons, Jr. He was a lacrosse coach at Syracuse. Any lacrosse fans here? Okay. So he, he, was a lacrosse, he was a lacrosse coach for years at Syracuse. And he was something else. He still is. He was in the mid-70s. one of my closest friends. And he is an incredible, inspirational leader. I was in the room here yesterday for an hour and a half talking to him. And I was going to talk about him today. And uh, this guy went 16 years in the final four in a row and won six national championships. Had an unbelievable amount of All-Americans and went to the finals nine of those uh, uh, 16 years. Created a protege named John Desco, who took over 11 years ago and won five out of the last 11 national championships. And since I met Coach 25, 30 years ago, the whole, the whole thing about his life and his culture was not about the lacrosse game. The whole thing was about respect, love, trust. So like whenever I talked to him, I know that he was deeply involved in my head and making me better. And, I, and it was just an unbelievable feeling, like, you know, your parents did you or whatever. So it was just unbelievable. He gave this to the next coach, and they didn't, didn't win five out of 11 national championships. So I kind of was following this. I'm going to be writing a book about it, and about this class and about culture, this, this kind of thing. So Coach Simmons had halftime. Instead of talking about the X's and O's, because they would be down at halftime. Instead of going in to these kids that are 18 to 20 years old, 22 years old, and talking about how to go beat them by doing the X's and O's, he would talk about building a chapel in the community, and what a chapel would do for a community, and how you would build a chapel, and what kind of team members you would need to build a chapel. And the kids would be looking at like, coach. We're getting our butts kicked, you know, like, you know, we want to go out. And, and then he would do two or three sentences to them that would raise them to a different level. And they'd go out and win. And this kept going and going. And it's like 30 years of going. And the, so what I want to do is, uh, is talk one last example and then show you an example of this real quick. And he would also talk. Uh, there was a scrimmage going on at one of the practices. And, you know, nowadays you probably wouldn't be able to do this. This is 20 years ago. And this kid got a coach shot. And the scrimmage was really hard. I didn't drink the water. And the coach looked at him like, what? You didn't drink the water. We're trying to you know, win the national championship. We're practicing. So he says, time out. Come on, guys. Huddle up. Brings all the guys over to the side. They're circling around. He says, John wants a glass of water. And, uh, and all the guys are looking at him, you know, they all they know that they're going to win the national championship. He says, I think John needs to know that we don't drink water. We drink whiskey. <laughs> he says, water's for washing clothes. So I just want you guys to know that. And uh, but that was the way he would talk to them. He wasn't really being serious about drinking whiskey all the time. But it's a way of thinking. And a way of just like, being 10% better, 20% better, and best in the country. So, go ahead. Uh, one last thing that he would say to them, and I'm preparing to show this to you, he would say to them, we'd be talking about people within the family, the Syracuse like, Cross family. And I would say something negative about somebody. Well, he's not recruiting hard enough. The coach would always say, he's a family member. You can't say that about the family. Kind of what the culture is here is, you can't say anything about our family. Because the Wembas, those 700, the 1,000, they're involved in this course, it's all a big family.
family. And we're kind of like working on helping each other. It's unbelievable the amount of money people have raised for each other, for deals, or buying our company, or Andrew. Where's your head? Where's your head? So this is this year's national championship game. Syracuse is down nine to six with five minutes left. They're down nine to six. So the reason why I'm showing you this is not because of my love for lacrosse or trying to convince you to be a love of lacrosse, but it's the we play here at Wharton to not lose. Or do we play to win? Okay? So that's huge. A lot of you guys have been you know, pursuing different things and you're kind of vacillating about this and that, about what you're going to do in these projects, what you're going to do at one of these working. And if you have this, I don't want to lose, it's going to be what happened to the guys in the red. Because they had it, they didn't know how to finish. They didn't know how to be that top 10%. They just, you know, the Orange won the last two championships. Did they know how to win? Here at Wharton, we know how to win. 